Welcome to Crop Focus TV. I'm here today at McGregor Farms in Coldstream to talk to David Fuller about the farming enterprise. David, do you want to tell us a bit about the farm and yourself? Yeah, I've been arable technical manager at McGregor Farms for the past 10 years. Um, we're currently farming uh, 3,200 hectares approximately on 14 different contract farms. Uh, each farm we run a rotation bespoke to the farm itself depending on soil types, the client's requirements and my key responsibilities within the business are growing the crop, field walking, directing the sprayers, the drills and purchasing inputs. That's great, let's go and have a look at the farm. Right James, so here we are in our penultimate wheat field of sowing for the 2018 season. Um, it's a field after potatoes. Um, we're just drilling it with a Vadastat drill, quite late in the season now, well, for us anyway. It's a heck of a piece of machinery. What, what sort of technology do you have on this, on this piece of kit to help you on the farm? We drill variably, so we use a variable seed rate. We've developed that through soil conductivity mapping the fields first, um, which is a one, once in a lifetime thing for the field because the soil textures don't change over time. Um, we can then put the data into our gatekeeper um, crop recording program. And from there we can generate variable rate seed maps depending on the soil, soil types that were found um, with the conductivity scans. Basically we're putting more seed on heavier parts of the field and less seed on the lighter parts of the field based on the expected ex establishment of the crop. What's the advantages of being able to uh, change um, the amount of seed you put on based on establishment? I think using the system we use we can put digital boundaries around different areas of the field. The drill driver is then not having to make the decisions for himself when he hits the heavier bits of the field and pressing the up 5% button. We're varying the seed up to 40%, so on the very heavy parts of um, the farms and from an expected establishment of 55% up to on better ground, such as the ground we're looking at at the moment, probably 85-90% expected so, establishment. So knocking it up and down 5% um, based on sort of knowledge of the field sometimes isn't quite enough? No, nowhere near enough. I think you have to make big changes to make a difference to the establishment of the crop or the evenness of the final crop um, at harvest. Um, so those big changes are needed and I don't think we'd be brave enough to do that on our own without putting a digital boundary around it and then it's almost done for us. Um, also we'll vary our seed rate according to the time of year so the base rate obviously increases as the season gets later. So David, I, I hesitate to bring up the B word, but how are you on the farm looking to cope with Brexit? I think it's very difficult to know really how we're going to cope. Agriculture generally adapts to different conditions, yeah. be it the climate or the political landscape. In this field, we've drilled this with a Claydon strip drill, so at this point we're thinking we're going to try and keep a lid on costs or control our costs yeah. by um, doing less cultivation basically. Um, I think the government have muted on uh, soil health as being a criteria for qualifying for any sort of types of payments. Um, so we're trialling this year a Claydon strip drill, um, which we bought second hand. Um, we've drilled about 1,200 acres with it this year. And that's pretty unusual up in this neck of the woods, isn't it, to be it, using strip till? Yeah, traditional methods of um, crop establishment being the plough and a power harrow combination um, in the past, which is a safe way of establishing wheat crops with the climate, the climate that we get up here. We use a min-till system with a Fadastat drill for the bulk of our drilling, um, but there's uh, only a couple of Claydon drills in this sort of area, um, and I don't think anybody will have drilled quite as much as we have with one this season, for sure. And, and what kind of benefits do you hope to get from moving to the strip-till type I, approach? I think saving, saving a lot of time for ourselves. Um, obviously, it's a one-pass system not doing an extra cultivation there or an extra couple of cultivations which we do with our other system, the Vadastat um, Simba system. So saving time, saving fuel and looking after our soil by not moving it unnecessarily. And do you, have you got any feelings for the, the kinds of savings that you've been able to achieve this autumn as yet? We think we'll save roughly 50% um, of our establishment costs. Um, it's not just about actually saving, we need to maintain our yield. Um, as contract farmers, we've got to make the pots as big as possible to split with our farming clients, so it mustn't be at a, a de detriment to yield. 
So that's our biggest, biggest challenge is reducing costs. David, we're stood in front of one of your fields here. Could you tell us a little bit about what's in it? Yep, so in the fields behind us, we're, um, we've got a cover crop in there. It's uh, mustard. These two fields are destined for um, spring barley next year. And basically we've taken a spring barley crop off last year um, and then drilled them with our Claydon drill, strip till. And then the plan would be to glyphosate this off in the spring and then drill with spring barley again next year. Straight in with the Claydon? Straight in with the Claydon. So could you just tell us a little bit about the decisions and the, the things you were thinking of when you thought about putting a cover crop in? Yeah, I think the main reason that we established the cover crop is because our harvest was relatively early this year. Normally we'd be combining winter wheat, spring barley in the last week of August, which is a time when we'd normally be sowing oilseed rape. Um, this year harvest was a little bit earlier, so that enabled us to have the time and the machinery to um, drill a cover crop. Nothing more technical than that, unfortunately, but it's given us a look-see. We've, we've left a strip in the middle of the field there to see how much benefit we get from cover crop, and it might just focus our minds a little bit in the future. Have you had any problems with putting them in, or, or are any problems going forward? No, as you can see, we've had quite good establishment. The only thing yeah, we've got great. is um, volunteer barley, which we've actually sprayed off, so hopefully we'll just have mustard shortly, because we don't want a green bridge for the next year's spring barley with spring barley, which was the previous crop, obviously. So, and I think, I think we're just looking to improve the structure. We're using the Claydon drill, which is a strip till, which doesn't move a lot of soil, hopefully. And then um, the tine on that on that drill will create the seed bed for the spring barley with the mustard doing the rest for us. Absolutely, and I think the main thing with cover crops is, you know, the stuff that's going on underneath the crop is just as important as the stuff that's going on yeah, above. And with the you using it in, in, in conjunction with the Claydon, I think you'll uh, you'll have a really good turnout. But it looks great, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Thanks a lot. So David, we hear quite a bit about black grass further south, but I guess black grass here isn't perhaps your main weed, weed issue? No, grass weed wise, we don't really see much black grass at all. Occasional plants, we hand rogue most, all, our, all of our wheat fields is hand roged. Um, we do pick one or two plants, but brome really is one of our, sterile brome especially, and we've got a new weed that's given us a bit of bother, which is this fescue that you can see in this field. So how do you deal with with both of those? Really it's we use stale seed beds in the autumn so we can get a spray with glyphosate. This field here is um, stubble at the moment destined for spring barley and we've glyphosated it off now with a view that we'll be drilling with the clay and drill in the spring when conditions are right. Possibly might need another another spray around the headland which is where most of the problem seems to be. And you mentioned glyphosate obviously that's a, a hot topic at the moment. It, what impact would not having access to glyphosate have I think on your it, business? I think it'll have a huge impact on us. Um, we're moving towards a strip till system which really relies on glyphosate to get to spray the stale seed bed off before we drill it. Um, also in our part of the world we use it as a harvest management tool so we're basically pre-harvest pre spraying all our crop with um, oilseed rape and barley and wheat with with glyphosate pre-harvest. And, and if you couldn't do that, what, what impact would that have? I think it could lead to us requiring another combine to get the, get through the harvest, which is a huge investment, obviously. Um, we find um, that it gives us a couple of percent moisture content, and it definitely gets us into the field a lot quicker after rain. Um, August, can, well, it is our, on average, our wettest month, which is obviously yeah. our harvest month as well. Yeah. Um, so it could have a huge impact. So for you, glyphosate is vital? It's very vital, yeah. Almost critical, I would say, yeah. Dave, we're still in a, a fantastic looking field of oilseed rape. Can you tell us a little bit about the variety you've put into the ground here? How it fits into your rotation and how important it is to you? Yeah, oilseed rapes probably our most important break crop. We grow potatoes and vining peas. We can't grow potatoes on every farm nor vining peas. Um, so oilseed rape is our main break crop. Um, so obviously quite critical to our rotations. Well, we grow 100% hybrids on the farm and the reason we do that is for the, the vigour both in the autumn and the spring but probably more importantly in the spring when we get um, cold, cold late springs like the spring we've just had very important that the crops gets, gets up and off. Um, 
and we grow the hybrids obviously for consistency also in yield so we're aiming for a consistent yield across 625 hectares um, on 14 different farms so it's very important that we have consistency in yield. And in terms of establishment how, how do you go about putting in the ground? The crops established in a one pass um, system straight behind the combine after winter wheat um, probably 70% after winter wheat and some after winter barley on some more challenging land and we use a Simba SL cultivator to establish the rape. We sow it at 40 seeds per metre squared um, with a liquid fertiliser starter fertiliser with it as well. So give it a good start and in terms of challenges that you face with the crop what, what are they mainly? Biggest um, challenge we find is soil conditions at time of sowing um, with two Simba SL, 7 metre SL, so we can drill about 100 hectares a day. So right. we have plenty of output so we can drill on the right days. We've found in wet summers that um, that is pretty, pretty gruesome when we get a really wet summer to get the crop established. Um, slugs are a big pressure to us as well. August being our, one of our wettest months, or our wettest month, rainfall wise. Um, slug pressure obviously increases towards the time when we're sowing our seed rape. So slugs can be a bit of an issue as well as it's establishing. And up and down the country, you know, we hear stories all the time in the, in the farming press about uh, cabbage and flea beetle and, and the sort of dramatic effect it's having on those crops. Uh, is it affecting you here? No, I think we're quite lucky in this area. We don't really see a lot of cabbage stem flea beetle at all. This year we had our first scare since the ban in 2014. Um, quite a bit of shot hole in on some land we have near Kelso in the west, west of the ground that we farm. And um, we did spray that in the end just because we were 90% of the plants were getting shot hold. One spray, luckily that was that was the end of cabbage stem flea beetle. And as you can see with the crop behind us, we've not had a, any, any pestilence really this autumn at all. So we're quite great. happy. Yeah, it's great, brilliant. Well, if you can keep it looking as good as this, I'm sure it'll uh, produce a great crop. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.